we're going to look at the organelles of eukaryotic cells. And we're going to look at the structure, so what they look like, and the function, which is what they do. Let's have a look at our learning objectives, nice and quick one this week. We're going to identify key structures within a eukaryotic cell. We're going to explain the role of each organelle, and that's pretty much it. So first of all, I want to talk about this thing called compartmentalization. And this is the idea that the reason we have organelles is to allow different chemical reactions to occur and to be separated. And the advantage of that is that it makes sure that reactions don't interfere with one another and mess things up. So here's a simplified diagram of just some of the reactions that are going on in the different organelles. You can see there's loads of stuff happening and certain things would interfere with other reactions. So we'd like to keep them separate. So, moving on from that, we're going to say, well, what is a eukaryote or what is a eukaryotic cell? Well, it's something that has uh, a distinct nucleus within their cells. Eukaryotes typically have many different membrane-bound organelles to keep those reactions separate and to make sure that compartmentalization has occurred. So this is from the Greek. So eu is good and karyon is a nut or a kernel. So good nut or good kernel. Think of a nut with a shell, nice uh, shell around the outside, and then stuff within it. And that re that's supposed to represent the nucleus. And there is a typical eukaryotic cell. So let's start with the nucleus. This consists of a nuclear envelope, the nucleolus, and chromatin. Now the nuclear envelope is like a porous double membrane around the outside that allows stuff to get in and stuff to get out. The nucleolus is within the nucleus and that's the job, that's, sorry, the function of the nucleolus is to synthesize ribosomes, to build ribosomes. And we'll talk about these ribosomes a little bit later. Finally we've got the chromatin which is highly condensed in packaged DNA. So it's DNA wrapped around these things called histones which makes them much more condensed and we can see chromatin in the form of chromosomes at certain points during the cell cycle. So there is the nucleus. We can see the nuclear envelope around the outside, the chromatin as those colourful strands in the middle, the nucleolus right in the very middle, that very dense region, and the nuclear pores around the exterior. Note as well this has got the rough endoplasmic reticulum associated very closely to it, and we'll see why later. Another very important organelle is the mitochondria, or mitochondrion, if we're talking single. So the mitochondria are where aerobic respiration happens. Very important reaction. The inner membrane of the mitochondria, again, this is a double membrane-bound organelle. The inner membrane is folded into these big folds called cristae, and they increase the surface area for the reactions of aerobic respiration. In addition to the cristae, we've also got this soup, like a, a cytoplasm within an organelle called the matrix, which contains the enzymes that are necessary for the intermediate stages of aerobic respiration. And here is our mitochondrion. Moving on, we'll look at the ribosomes, and these are responsible for building new proteins. They, make, they do protein synthesis. And they can be found either free in the cytoplasm or bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which we'll talk about next. They're made up of two subunits that are manufactured by the nucleolus. And here's what they look like. We've got a small subunit on the top, a large subunit in the middle, and then they come together and your proteins effectively get built up and printed through the middle. It's a little bit like one of those label makers where you get the, the long sort of string of, um, of text coming out of one side. It's a little bit like that, but for proteins making up the big polypeptides out of the small monomers, the amino acids. Very clever little pieces of kit. Next up we've got the endoplasmic reticulum, as promised, and these are a series of interlinked membranes in the cytoplasm. There are two different kinds. We've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which has got ribosomes on the surface, thus giving it that sort of rough appearance under an electron microscope, and this is responsible for the synthesis of proteins, big more complex proteins, and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes, and this is responsible for building up or synthesizing lipids. And here we have two little diagrams. On the left we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum with the ribosomes bound to the surface, and on the right we have a very simple drawing of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. 
the Golgi apparatus is the next one. Golgi apparatus is, re is responsible for modifying proteins which are produced by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And mainly this is for export to outside of the cell. So it, it mainly packages the proteins in small membrane bubbles which we call vesicles. And there we are, there's our Golgi apparatus. It kind of looks like a stack of dinner plates. <laughs>